everyone, thank you for joining today's webinar on another beautiful Wednesday. We have several industry experts from Berkshire Sterile Manufacturing, Clarinor, and Steriline that will be speaking to you today to answer how Pulse Light technology provides added sterility assurance and sterile processing. My name is Sarah and I'll be your host for today. Before we get into today's event, I do want to let you know that you are welcome to ask questions at any point during this webinar. To ask a question, select the word bubble that appears in the toolbar at the right-hand side of your screen, write in your question, and click send. Our off-screen moderator will source those questions and present that at the end for our speakers to answer. And I could not continue without first telling you about our series. Today's webinar is only a piece in an in-depth webinar series regarding some of the newest technologies in small-scale sterile filling. If you enjoyed today's event and you want to learn more about the latest and greatest and fill finish, I highly encourage you to sign up for our other webinars. We also record each event and they are available for you to watch as well. So open any browser, type in berkshiresterilemanufacturing.com slash the future of small scale sterile filling to see all of our events and sign up for our future webinars, such as our April 7th event about building flexibility into isolator based filling lines. We also have all of our past event recordings on that page for you to view. These webinars are completely free to join or watch, so I hope you take advantage of that because we have a lot of expertise and hard work going into creating these events. I guarantee that you will learn something. So getting back to today's event, our speakers from Berkshire Sterile Manufacturing include Dr. Andrea Wagner, the Senior Vice President of Business Development, Devin Wigington, the Vice President of Quality Control, and Tyler Rush, the Vice President of Manufacturing. We also have Dr. Christoph Riedel, the CEO of Clarinor, and Federico Fumagalli, the CCO at Sterilein. Today, these speakers will be answering the following three questions. One, how does Pulse Light technology provide active decontamination in a safe yet effective manner? Two, how has this technology incorporated how was this technology incorporated into an isolated system with a robotic arm to decontaminate RTU containers? And finally, three, how will this system be used at Berkshire Sterile Manufacturing? And what added benefits will this provide to BSM's clients? First, I want to invite Dr. Andrea Wagner to speak. Andrea, what is BSM and why do they have a sudden interest in incorporating new technology into their filling line? Thanks, Sarah. Berkshire Sterile Manufacturing is a contract manufacturing organization that provides primarily clinical scale and small volume commercial sterile filling of vials, syringes, and cartridges. We specialize in high quality filling operations inside isolators using the most modern technology currently available. We currently have two isolator based filling lines. One is a manual line and another a semi-automated line. And we're adding a third, which is the robotic line that we're discussing in this series. We wanted to provide larger unit capabilities to support customers with large phase three clinical needs and small volume commercial products with this larger line. But we also wanted to add new technologies to increase sterility assurance and eliminate operator interactions. Devin, who is the vice president of quality control can give you more details on that. Thank you, Andrea. So BSM is currently constructing their third isolator line. I would like to invite Devin now to speak. Devin, why is BSM incorporating a decontamination chamber and how did you decide to go for Pulse Light as a sterilant? Thanks, Sarah. At Berkshire Sterile Manufacturing, we are building a new state-of-the-art filling line with the goal of providing the highest level of sterility assurance. As a result, we purchased an isolator-based filling line since this provides much greater sterility assurance than traditional clean rooms and wraps. But there is still a risk of contamination from the way that materials, specifically ready-to-use containers, are brought into the isolator. Currently, many small-scale fill finish CMOs use no-touch transfer systems to prevent contaminant from reaching the isolated areas. The no-touch transfer NTT system involves ready-to-use containers double or triple wrapped, peeling each layer and strategically pushing the material into the next wraps or isolator. This technique allows RTU tubs to pass into the isolator without being touched, and it can be very effective if performed correctly, but it cannot eliminate the risk that contaminates still be brought into the isolator on tub surfaces. 
You can see in this short clip that as the RTU tub is being passed through to the isolator, a small amount of contaminant has the potential to be transferred to the RTU tub and this would be introduced into the sterile core of the isolator filling line. Mm -hmm. Consider that in a large fill, hundreds of tubs of RTU containers are introduced this way. At BSM, we desire to add an active decontamination method for incoming RTU tubs in addition to using NTT systems to give an additional level of sterility assurance. We looked at flash steam sterilization, sterilant gases such as VHP, electron beam or E-beam systems as potential solutions. However, flash steam sterilization, which works like an autoclave, was not advanced enough to prevent water from getting into the RTU tubs. We were concerned about the product impact of using sterilant gases like VHP. And E-beam systems were very large and very expensive and not environmentally friendly. We reached out to Steriline, who had developed pulse light technology in collaboration with Clarinor as a means to sanitize RTU containers. They demonstrated that this technology was very effective at sterilizing incoming RTU tubs, had no product impact concerns, and could handle the line speeds that BSM required. The other technology we employed in this line was robotics to create an operator-less system. This has been employed in other fill lines, has been promoted by some as a means to create a gloveless system, but we desire to keep gloves for an emergency situation if one arose during operation. I could talk more about this, but I think this would be a great transition point to turn the presentation over to Clarinor for more detail on how Pulse Light works. Thank you, Devin. I will turn the focus over now to Dr. Christoph Riedel. Christoph, your company, Clarinor, of course, creates pulse light decontamination systems, and it's your product that will actively decontaminate these RTU tubs. Can you tell us how pulse light works and why it's an effective sterilant? Thank you, Sarah. Pulse light technology is an incredibly powerful sanitization tool. It operates on the basic principle that microorganisms absorb energy. They will absorb light in the visible range if they have color, that is around 400 nanometers to 700 nanometers, and they also absorb in the UVA range, which is 280 nanometers to 400 nanometers. This absorption will occur without strong molecular change. However, microorganisms will also absorb energy in the UVC range, 200 to 280 nanometers, which causes dramatic molecular changes. DNA and protein absorb the UV energy at these wavelengths, leading to changes in molecular configuration and even covalent bond breakage. Here, I have a diagram that demonstrates the emission spectrum of the flash lamp we use. As you can see, we have a strong intensity of that UVC light in each flash. This light wavelength holds the sterilization power each pulse lasts for 0.3 milliseconds and delivers 300 Joule of energy for one lamp. So, the lamp power during the, each flash reaches a power of 1 megawatt. 20 years ago, a study was conducted by Dr. Weckhoff in German, Germany, and his goal was to differentiate the effect of pulse light. His research showed that pulse light is very efficient at destroying microorganisms and he explained this destruction in two ways. He mentioned first a photothermal effect where the flash increases the temperature in the microorganism until explosion and second a photochemical effect where it alters the molecular configuration of DNA and proteins as described, described earlier. We know that pulse light is effective against bacteria and viruses, but it is also effective against mold. Here, I have a photo of a black mold spore before and after treatment with the pulse light technology from Vekov's research. You can clearly see the rupture in the spore cell wall after treatment, making it effectively inactive. Later, in 2013, the photothermal and photochemical effects of pulse light on aspergillus mold species of various colors were studied. These are common fungi that can cause disease in patients with weakened immune systems, 
and they are also well known for food spoilage. This species absorbs in the UV visible and infrared wavelength ranges, but DNA and protein modification only occur in the presence of UVC light. The black species are more difficult to kill because they are protected with melanin. Melanin, of course, absorbs harmful UV radiation. Here I have two graphs from this study. They each show increased spore reduction of UVC fluence. Fluence, of course, is the energy per unit area. Since the unit area and the wavelength spectrum of the lamps are not changing, the x-axis merely represents increasing light intensity. So we see a direct relationship between increased light intensity of UVC and increased spore degradation. The top graph demonstrates the effect of pulse light, while the bottom graph uses continuous UVC lamps. As a result, we clearly see that with a similar dose of UVC, pulse light is more efficient than continuous mercury UVC lamps. On the black species of Aspergillus niger, which is also the most resistant to UVC light. I want to mention that this graph depicts the log reduction that was achieved, so in a single flash, a greater than 5 log reduction in spores was obtained. This is an incredibly power sanitization level. Wet chemical cleanings in closed wraps are expected to reach a 4 log reduction in bio burden, and here uh, are looking at a greater than 5 log reduction in harder to kill spores in one pulse of la light lasting a third of, of a millisecond. This is an incredibly powerful sanitization tool. So, to recap, this study on Aspergillus species demonstrates that melanin protects from UVC, that UVA, UVB and visible light all participate in the killing effect and that power plays a role in the sanitization. Here you can see the effect of UV light on species of bacterial spores. Bacillus subtilis spores have multiple, la multiple layers of protective coats made up of 70 different proteins, so they, have, they are difficult to destroy. Niger spores are very resistant to UVC radiation. You need a significant amount of energy to destroy them. As a result, they are common contaminants of the International Space Station, which just highlights how easily they can survive in harsh conditions. In this study, the log reduction of A. niger and B. subtilis was measured against increasing intensity of pulse light. The blue lines represent a result, the, the results with a UVC-free flash, meaning a filter blocked all the spectrum below 280 nanometers, while the black lines represent results with unfiltered flashes with UVC wavelengths. As you can see, results look very different for A. niger and B. subtilis. The A. niger spores were much more destroyed, destroyed with, the UVC, uh, with the UVC range, but there was still a significant reduction without UVC. For Bacillus subtilis, without UVC, there is almost no decontamination. This demonstrates that UVC wavelengths are essential for B. subtilis inactivation with pulse light and that they are important for A. niger destruction. This, pictures, this picture here shows a transversal cut of a Bacillus subtilis spore, which I described earlier. As you can see, it has a thick multi-layer proteic tunic made up of several protein coats. There are nearly 70 different proteins that make up this protective shell. The results of a collaboration of Claranor with its partner Microbiology Research Center from 2013 was recently published in the International Journal of Food Microbiology. In that study, we demonstrated that pulse light was in fact degradating Bacillus subtilis spores. 
We treated separate samples of these pores with no light, with continuous UV light, and with pulse light. After treatment, these samples were analyzed by electrophoresis for various proteins of the spore codes, and our results indicated that some of these proteins were effectively eliminated by pulse light, but not all, and none were eliminated by continuous UVC light. This was confirmed with proteomic analysis, a process that is essentially taking samples of the unidenti unidentified proteins in the electrophoresis test and running them through a mass spectrometer. Those unidentified proteins from the pulse light uh, treated samples were confirmed to be photodegradation byproducts of the missing proteins. During this test, we also discovered that the spores of mutant strains with effects in the gene coding for spore code proteins were more sensitive to pulse light than to continuous UVC. This here is another study conducted by Caroline Levy, our Claranor PhD student, using a Claranor 3 lamp pilot equipment in 2008. The log reduction in different in the three, uh, for three different classes of bacteria and one class of mold was analyzed at different intensity flashes. And as you can see, she could reach a five log reduction on all germs, bacteria, mold, and spores, including some of the most resistant strains due to a combination of two events, a high power flash of 1 megawatt during 0.3 millisecond period of time, and the use of a broad spectrum light from 200 to 1100 nanometer. So, what I have shown you today is that pulse light technology is an incredibly powerful sanitization tool. Over the last 50 years, many people knew of this but did not know how and where to apply it. Pulse light was discovered in 1970, but it wasn't industrialized until Claranor established in 2004 and incorporated uh, industrial equipment into manufacturing and packaging lines. When Claranor was established, we wanted to offer a clean, non-thermal technology for the food industry. At that time, many people were looking for solutions for food hygiene, for ready-to-eat products or on the go. They expected to reduce the risk of pathogens and increase the product's shelf life without destroying the food sensory properties. Claranor hired a PhD student in uh, 2008 with the idea of connecting dose of energy and response in log kill. We worked on dry surfaces and liquids and saw how efficient pulse light was for the sterilization of dry surfaces. We saw many log reduction in one flash in a very short time without chemicals and without a lot of energy. Progressively from 2008, we stopped our attempt to convert the customers for applications on food to develop the sterilization of packaging, caps on beverage, beverage filling lines and even at, at very high speed, Caps and leads for the dairy industry, films, preforms, cans, and so on. At that time, we also began talking with Steriline about using pulse light to sterilize RTU tubs. But it wasn't until after uh, 2014 when Steriline began applying robot technology to their machines that the idea became more uh, of a reality. In 2017, Steriline bought a pulse light emitter from Claranor to start the design and internal testing activities. I will leave that part for Steriline to elaborate on, but I want to leave you with this. Pulse light is an extremely powerful decontamination method. It is fast. It will sanitize the surface in one or few flashes. And for the application that Steriline will show, you in a moment, it can sterilize RTU tubs at a rate of 2 per minute 
It is also very safe. It does not leave any residue on the packaging and it does not produce any harmful byproducts. The pulse light systems we produce are quite compact, which is helpful for situations like in this filling line, where space is a commodity. And finally, it's eco-friendly. We were awarded by the Solar Impulse Foundation as one of the thousand efficient solutions to change the world. We are very proud of the work we do. With that, I will now turn you over to Steriline. Thank you, Christoph. That was an incredible amount of information. I will now invite Federico Fumagalli from Steriline to speak. Federico, can you speak to how this technology was incorporated into an isolated system? Absolutely. First, thank you, Christophe, and you did an excellent job explaining exactly why this is a sought-after solution. Uh, we had been in communication with Claranor since 2007-2008. At the time, a major pharmaceutical uh, industry was looking to sterilize stuff with the pulse light technology. But the technology was not advanced enough uh, to realize this solution. We did not have robots, so it was not possible to sanitize each surface because we were not able to find a solution that would avoid shadow points if the movement of the tub was uh, mechanical. In 2014, Streline began applying the robot technology to its machine. The very first uh, was for nested PFS filling, and then uh, uh, we applied on a filling machine for bulk bites. By 2016, we contacted Claranor again to show them that it was possible to have all the surfaces properly flashed by pulse light using a robot arm to move the tub. In 2017, Streline bought a pulse light emitter from Claranor to start the design and uh, internal testing activities. We selected Stubbly as a robotic arm for uh, this application for its well known compatibility with the pharmaceutical standard and uh, with the VHP sterilization. The cooperation restarted and the first pro the prototype was released. In the same year, a German pharmaceutical company showed interest uh, in this new application. We carried out several tests uh, to demonstrate the log reduction on the surfaces of the tap. In 2020, the pharma company got the approval for the project by the FDA. This means that the pharmaceutical company has shown to the FDA their validation plan for the sterile filling line and mostly the post light isolator. And FDA gave their approval on the validation principles. The final approval will only involve the on site inspection. The complete line is currently under SAT in Germany. And the pulse light technology is a new technology in the pharmaceutical industry and it's not been used uh, before in the field finish uh, field. Of course, we have also sold a unit to Berkshire Sterile Manufacturing and uh, they reached out to us in the summer of 2019 with an extensive list of lists of needs, including an isolator-based decontamination chamber to sterilize reduced tubs of, uh, tubs of syringes, vials, and cartridges. This technology will be the first of its kind in, in the United States and will be used in a combination with a no-touch transfer system to ensure the ultimate sterility assurance uh, and here we can so see a short clip of this decontamination system. Uh, so here the tab is dropped onto this conveyor belt. This will occur directly after the no-touch transfer. Now the robot picks up the tab and will begin presenting it to the pulse light. There will be five flashes of light for each surface, offering a six-lock reduction in bio burden. This is how the unit looks during operation. The decontamination chamber will not be visible during operation to provide protection to the manufacturing staff from the harmful pulse light. Uh, once the tub has been successfully sterilized, it will exit on into a transfer chamber as shown here. As we continue to watch this video, it will show you the action occurring inside the decontamination chamber. On the left, you can see the action of the robot, on, and on the right, you can see the internal view from top as the robot presents the tab to the pulse light unit. The pulse light unit is attached on the missing wall that you see on the left side, uh, directly in front of the robot arm. The robot will pick up an RTU tab, then it will begin presenting each side of the tab to the pulse light system. 
the, the light will deliver five flashes to each surface. This will provide a six log reduction in bio burden for each surface. Once the robot has presented all the surfaces other than the one that is holding, the robot will set the tap down to sanitize uh, the grabbing arm by presenting it to the post light unit and then pick up the other side of the tub that has already been sanitized to present the last surface of the tub to the post light unit. After this, the tub has been completely sanitized and it passed through the exit mouse hole. As you saw, the system consists of three chambers. An inlet chamber with ISO 5 LAF, where the robot picks up the tub to be sterilized. A sterilizing chamber, uh, where the tub is sterilized uh, with pulse light, uh, also under ISO 5 LAF. And a transfer chamber with ISO 5 LAF, where the tub is positioned by the robot once the sterilization process is completed. The isolator is completely airtight and is sterilized by its own BHP generator before starting the production. At Berkshire Slime Manufacturing, they will have a no-touch transfer system in place that fits the inlet chamber, and the transfer chamber will lead the, this to the, the lead the line and robot shown here. This is the grease system for delivering RTU tabs uh, into an isolator and will dramatically improve sterility assurance for these RTU tabs over a no-touch transfer system alone. This unit is capable of processing two tabs per minute or 120 tabs per hour, which works very well for BSM needs. I would like to add that the boost light is just part of a much larger filling line that Sterline and BSM are building with several other suppliers. The schematic of the full line appears here, and it will have the capability of RTU vials, syringes, and cartridges, as well as, as, well as, as, well as bulk uh, vials. It includes a live laser with an autoloader and for robots to eliminate human operators. It's truly a novel, flexible filling system that is redefining the standard for flexible filling line. That's all I have to say on the matter, and I'm sure BSM is more. Uh, information to add. Thank you, Federico. Uh, let's turn back to Devin Wigington at BSM. I know that he has a video that he wants to share. So Devin, you now have the floor. Thanks, Sarah. I think it is clear now how novel this innovation is. You and Christoph covered the most important aspects of this project. I want to bring up the video that Federico shared with you except this time with an animation that demonstrates a killing power, this decontamination chamber. Now here you can see the harmful bacteria that is sitting on the RTU tub as is being introduced into the decontamination chamber. Obviously, it would be bad if this contaminated tub made it into the isolator. What you see now is the tub being sanitized by the pulse light. Now watch carefully as the tub exits. You see that? The harmful bacteria has successfully been killed. This little guy will not be able to harm anyone. Now I want to share with you how this chamber will connect with the line as a whole. When we were planning out this new fill line, we were trying to develop an ultra flexible filling line with the greatest sterility assurance level possible. Just to emphasize that Federico pointed out, this line will be able to fill syringes, cartridges, and vials, including RTU or bulk format vials. The entire system will be 100% automated, operator-less, and isolator-based. Devin, thank you for that. I especially love the animation that you put together. We have one more speaker to get to today. I am inviting Tyler Rush, who is the Vice President of Manufacturing at BSM, to speak. Tyler, why don't you describe the product flow in the new isolator line? Thanks, Sarah. RTU containers, whether vials, syringe, or cartridges, enter a no-touch transfer rabs that pass into the pulse-like decontamination isolator. After the tub is sanitized, it passes into the transfer isolator that leads to the D-lid and D-liner isolator. In this isolator, a robotic arm will remove the top sheeting on the RTU tub. The tub is then delivered to the automatic filling isolator. Bulk vials are loaded on a vial washer and pass into the depyrogenation tunnel. The exit from the depyrogenation tunnel goes into an accumulation isolator where the vials are fed into a rotary screw. This filler is actually quite unique. It was designed by Colinar with robots that can load the RTU nest or bulk vials onto an XY filler. 
Next month, Colin R. and Sterline will talk about the design aspects and how they were able to create this ultra flexible line. Once syringes and cartridges are filled and stoppered, they will exit their RTU tubs through an exit wrap. Vials, where the bulk are RTU, are unloaded onto a conveyor belt where they enter a diverting isolator, where they can be sent to a capper or to the lyophilizer with automatic load and unload capabilities. Since this entire system is robotic and the bulk vials enter directly after depyrogenation, we knew that the highest risk of contamination would be from the introduction of RTU containers. The addition of this pulse light decontamination chamber effectively eliminates that risk. For the client, this is great news. The filling line offers a level of sterility assurance that does not currently exist in small scale fill finish. Thank you, Tyler. It looks like we've reached the end of today's presentation. In just a moment, we will transition to the Q&A portion of this webinar. Again, to ask a question, select the word bubble that appears in the toolbar at the right-hand side of your screen. An area to type in your question will appear. Write us your question and hit send. We will display those for our speakers to answer. While everyone takes a moment to ask their question, um, I want to remind you that today's webinar is just the second webinar of this series, The Future of Small Scale Sterile Filling. We have several other upcoming events that we invite you to join. Um, for example, in April, we will be airing our next webinar regarding uh, building flexibility into isolator-based filling lines. As Tyler discussed briefly today, Colinar, Steriline, and Berkshire Sterile Manufacturing have worked diligently to create a one-of-a-kind flexible filling unit capable of filling RTU containers in their XY format and bulk vials presented off a conveyor belt. In that webinar, you will be able to see a simulation of this filler, and Steriline will discuss the entire uh, process flow of each container type through the isolator. We hope that you can join us for that upcoming event and following the end of today's webinar, I will be sending you an email with a sign up link to each of these events. But you can also sign up by going to BerkshireSteroManufacturing.com slash the future of small scale sterile filling. And the events will be listed there for you to register to. Now we're going to give our moderator a minute or so to field your questions and select a few to ask our speakers. Um, and we'll be right back in just a little bit. Okay, so it looks like we received all the questions we're going to get. Uh, let's start with the first question. This one will go to Devin. Uh, one of the viewers had asked Devin, how will this system be validated? That's a good question. Uh, this is a novel technology, so there is no standard on validation yet. Um, we are developing um, what our strategy will be. Um, the basis for it will be the use of biological indicators. Um, the effectiveness will be measured by a reduction in population uh, of these BIs. Thank you, Devin. The next question I have um, is, since the decontamination chamber is not visible during operation, how can you be sure that the pulse light unit or the robot arm is working properly? Federico, maybe you can answer that one for us. Inside the sterilization chamber, there is a, a sensor that detects the power and intensity of the light and the number of flashes. So we are sure that each and every surface of the tub is uh, uh, subjected to the proper sterilization phase. Great, thank you so much, Federico. The next one I will direct to Christoph at Clarinor. The question is, why is there a difference in the effectiveness between pulsed light and continuous UV light? We are talking about a decontamination process, and as such, it should be effective against all kinds of microorganisms, 
A UVC lamp is very efficient against bacterial vegetative cells and even spores, but not against molds because the light emission with the pulse light process also contains non-UVC wavelengths and comes with an extremely high power. It is also highly efficient against molds. As such, pulse light is efficient against any kind of microorganisms and also viruses, and then much more efficient than the UVC. Well said, Christophe. Um... Devin, we have another question for you. A viewer asked, how will other materials beside RTU tubs be introduced into the isolator? That's a good question. All non-product contact items will be hung inside the isolator and will be VHP'd with a filling line. Plungers or stoppers will be introduced into the isolator through a designated rapid transfer port. This is a system where a pre-sterilized vessel containing stoppers or plungers is latched to an RTP port in the isolator. They are locked together so only sterile surfaces are exposed to the filling line. Great, thank you, Devin. I have just one more question to ask, and I think this would be best answered by Federico at Steriline. The question is, why five flashes? Why not four or six flashes for each surface? We tested several different number of flashes, starting from two up to seven, eight. And we found out that in order to achieve a six log reduction on uh, the uh, six log reduction sterilization, uh, we had the best solution was with five flashes. Well said, Federico. That is all the questions we are going to take for today. If you did not get yours answered, don't stress because we will reach out to you individually to answer your questions. But thank you so much for staying with us through today's event. And a huge thank you to Christoph Riedel, Federico Fumagalli, Devin Wigginton, Tyler Rush, and Andrea Wagner. Uh, this has been a really wonderful webinar. Again, to all of our viewers that are here, thank you for joining this event and keep your eye out for my email. I will be including a link to the recording of this event and the registration link for our future webinars. I want to give a special thanks to the following three companies, Berkshire Sterile Manufacturing, Clarinor, and Steriline. They put in a lot of time and effort to make today's event a success. I hope you took a lot away from this presentation and remember, let's pulse together for a cleaner future.